the seventh video in a big series all about mapping out and practicing melodic arpeggio guitar shapes, multiple positions all over the guitar, how to target chord tones of almost any chord type. We have 12 chord types in this series. Today we are doing the minor six chord. This is essential stuff to have mapped out for improvising in a jazz context, but it's also great just technique practice, great for composing melodies, great for just music theory knowledge on the fretboard, great for ear training so we can hear these arpeggios, hear the chord tones of these different chord types and chord qualities as we are practicing them. I have a free resource, a free download that you can get to follow along. It's my chord tone vocabulary pack. It just has five positions of 12 different chord types, all the stuff we're talking about in this series, and it has definitely the minor six chord, which we're talking about in this lesson. Just use the link in the top of the description to get that, and there's also a link down there of a playlist to all the videos in this series. In this video, I am going to demonstrate, just play up and down each of the five arpeggio shapes of the minor six chord. This is what I want you to be able to work towards with really any chord type, so I'll just demonstrate that. Then I'm gonna go through and explain exactly what fingerings that I recommend using for for those shapes and lastly we're just going to improvise with each of the five shapes in the five positions of this chord and that's what I want you to work towards also and that's when it gets really fun and really creative and that's how we know that we have really have these shapes down we need to be able to kind of be playful with them it's gonna be fun let's get into it <laughs> Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics, new lessons every week, all designed to help us gain more creative control over music and express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. All right, today we're going over the minor six chord, the five arpeggio shapes, positions, the five chord tone forms, and the five steps to work on each of them so we're really comfortably able to improvise uh, melodically when that chord comes up in songs and progressions. So this is always what I recommend. We need to be able to sound good just on the one chord itself. And we need a few steps to get there before we can really integrate it into music when it's coming up in chord progressions. So the first thing to do is to be able to play just the chord tones from the root to the root. And you're repeating, starting on the root, ending on the root, and repeating all the roots. And not repeating or pausing on any other notes. Uh, that's what I call the root to root approach. Okay, and you can also just work on kind of the whole range of the chord tone form, but it's really good to get that root in your ears. And then we want to do a melodic pattern. And the one I recommend is where you take the lowest chord tone and you go up to the next chord tone and back down. And then you, you do that off each chord tone. Slow it down, do whatever you need to get it down. Do, 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 do whatever you need you can then you can work on it's, a, it's about mapping it out it's not about necessarily um, doing it in any particular way other than trying to see the arpeggio shape clearly so even if you wanted to use one finger which is not practical but it's about seeing the notes out of order in a non-linear way and then it's useful kind of melodic sounding for when we're improvising as well um, one side note here and that's that my last video was doing this whole process with the half diminished chord and the half diminished chord and the minor six chord well they are the same structure as, as each other just the root is in a different place but what you'll find when you work on these and at least for me and and I other people I've talked to about it agree it when you're working on it and really thinking of it as minor six versus half diminished it really feels like its own chord it really is not we can't really get by saying oh well I already know that physical shape well we, we're really wanting to hear it as a different type of chord and it just feels completely different there's a little bit of familiarity physically with just the particular maybe fingering reaches sometimes but um, but to me it just feels totally independent I don't there's not really you don't really get a freebie by having done that structure before so you just want to think of it really as its own thing in its own world it's great to know theoretically that it's the same as half diminished uh, same structure if, if you change the root then you get half diminished but but nope it's its own sound altogether and that's really really good for our ears and our playing so we just did the 
melodic pattern. Step three is to just improvise constant notes. Can we just keep it going? It's not supposed to be anything great yet. Nice and slow is fine. Just constant playing, jumping around. This is more mapping out. It can it can be fun and stimulating and and even sound cool, but it's not supposed to be, you know, our great solo yet. It's just how well do we know it? Then after that, try to do something that is musically uh, interesting, an actual phrasing. I do a lot of these with these examples where I'm starting on the root, doing something really simple and kind of rhythmic, starting a second phrase the same way as the first one and ending not on the root the first time and then ending on the root the, the second time or fourth time, something like that. So you're really reacting to what you played before. You can play anything. And if you go back and repeat that same idea and end a little differently, it can sound very cohesive, like a well thought out idea. So you can really just take risks. And if you pause and let yourself, right now it really sounds like a structured kind of song and idea. Okay, so you try to do something kind of uh, phrasing and musical with it. Right, so kind of a long one, kind of a convoluted one, but in any case, you're just giving it a shot. Um, Okay, making it musical and phrasing. And then the last thing to do is to start looking for notes around your chord type that you can play around the chord tones. Any notes work. I've been talking about this this whole series, so I hope you check out some of the other videos in the series. I'm repeating the basic structure each time, but also I'm kind of dropping in new ideas for how to improvise in general in each video. So if you're interested in mastering all of these chord types, definitely just hang with me and, and check out each of those videos. But we can really start to play just chromatically and around these chord tones. I have a loop going that I can use to, so we can hear the harmony under it. So. Just hanging out with chord tones for a sec. And now I'm just gonna, do I like that note? Every note can work if you want it to. Check this out. I was using this note and then this note here I used all these You can play anything you want. And you have these grounded notes to come back to and to save you. And you can really try anything. What about that note? That's the major third. That's, that's considered not a good note to play. But if you place it in the right way, hang there like that it's like no don't do that obviously anything moving through as a passing tone is going to be fine
works. Four. Using that major third is kind of a half step below four. Now kind of doing a thematic thing off each chord tone. That's what's cool about knowing these chord tones now. You can do little thematic things. If you do something on one chord tone, you can do the same thing on another. Whatever it might be, really. It's a good sign that sitting here, you know, teaching and ta talking about this, I just want to sit here and jam on this. We got to do the other positions though. So let's let's go through those five steps much more quickly on the other four arpeggio shapes of the minor six chord. Okay, here we go with the other four arpeggio shapes of minor six. Just being able to do that first. Okay, so this is all in fifth position. And then I want you to reach over with your third finger here. I keep saying reach over, but I just mean shift over because you don't want to cause tension. Shift over, fourth finger, first, pinky. So there's really just that third finger kind of shifting over for a second. There is a little bit of a reach going on sometimes. But those are the fingers I want you to use for that. It's extra important that we do this root to root thing. So we're hearing it as minor six and not half diminished like I talked about already. Step two is the melodic pattern. Step three is just improvise. Constant notes. Step four is try to do something melodic. That kind of thing, an actual song, melodic idea, something that feels lyrical to you. And lastly, we're gonna try to improvise, ideally with kind of some kind of backing track. I recommend the app iReal Pro. It's a great one. Just play over any chord type and kind of hear how it sounds. And then you can start trying to see how other notes around. Notice I'm just being experimental. And then you can get into the, try to do musical stuff once you find a few notes you like. to the next position. This is C minor six, the third shape on the, the vocabulary pack that I have. Oh, we wanna do root to root. Okay, step one, step two, pattern. it down when I needed to because uh, I wasn't you know not doing it with a metronome or worried about time just trying to get it clean and you can add metronome as a separate goal uh, individually but I like to just slow down and speed up as I need to to keep it clean and relaxed uh, then the third step is constant improv see all those notes with the map view, the bird's eye view of just everything available to you. Then try to do something, uh, play melodically. You can do that with a backing track or not. I kind of like doing it without a backing track because it really makes it feel like it has to be even stronger of an idea to stand on its own. Now 
Notice I'm doing a lot of back to the root like I talked about. So then you're gonna do uh, exploring the notes after that. And this is where it's so powerful to play with all of the shapes because you're just gonna see those consistent themes of, oh, there's a whole step in all of these shapes. That's five and six of the chord. Of course, passing between those chromatically is gonna work as just a passing tone. Well, that works on all the shapes. So once you know the chord tone form just really well and you've explored some of the notes around it on any of them, it, they kind of all come to life in a similar way. You still have to spend the time on it. If I feel like the four note and the two note work nicely, I'm gonna kind of recognize that in each of the arpeggio shapes when I go to add extra notes. You do have to know the arpeggio really well first to know that that's flat three and there, there's two next to it, there's four. Okay, let's do the next shape. I really like this one. Uh, this one, fingering wise, is just all gonna be 10th position, no shifting. I like that little shape below the root. One, six, five, three, five, six, one. Okay, so once you can do that, then the pattern. Notice I kind of end the pattern at the bottom, however, it doesn't matter. Just make it back down there, end it. Sometimes I go back to the root, sometimes just let it drop off. Uh, step three is your constant improv. I just always want to demonstrate all this stuff on every shape, every position. I love practicing this stuff too. I want every opportunity I can to, to review it, to play it, to find some expression in it. That's why I love showing it to you. And I don't want to just tell you, whoop, mess it up there. I don't want to just tell you to practice it without showing you. Even though it makes sense now what to do, we want to kind of just sit together and explore it on every position. So after that, then try to do your musical phrasing. And again, this musical phrasing part is where you're going to get the most, once you just know the shape, your intimacy with the sound and the actual chord is gonna come from your, your musical phrasing part. Cause I'm just really, now I'm hearing the gravity of that root so nicely and that minor triad. And then, da -da -da -da, and then it's just such a pleasure to use that natural six on this. It's a minor triad with a natural six. I talked before about how singing along helps me feel like my phrasing is a little more musical. It's a great thing to play around with. And then we'll try to find those extra interesting notes. And I went over to that low root down there just because I wanted to hear that. Um, and again, those extra notes are going to be kind of the same things you're going to find in every position. Okay, here's our backing track. We already know that I, I like the two. Here's flat three, here's two, here's four. Here's six. I like seven. Dun, six, seven, one, seven, six, seven, one. I like flat seven, two. Flat seven, one. Da, 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 da. So I'm just showing how that natural seven sounds great leading into one and the flat seven sounds great leading into six. And that's not the only way to use them, but it's just an example. Okay. 
final arpeggio shape for C minor six. We want to do that root to root first. <laughs> Fingering wise, we just want to shift over to 13th position for the top two strings. Shift back over to 12th position for the rest of the bottom four strings. Okay, pretty straightforward there. And then the pattern, some kind of melodic pattern. hearing it is minor six which is nice if this is our root then it's half diminished right but it's so nice that my ear is really hearing it as, as c minor six because of how we've been practicing it this whole time okay so then the constant improv kind of chord quarter notes and then sometimes eighth notes for me I like to just really challenge myself as I'm getting more comfortable with them to really just kind of keep going with eighth notes, maybe speed it up even, but it's just about mapping it out here. After that, of really seeing it well, then you try some phrasing. musical sentence or idea or even just a little statement so maybe I do a lot of you know starting on the root or ending on the root okay and then adding all those extra notes by the time you're going through all of these, you're just going to say, well, where are those notes I know already from the other positions? There's that four. Sounds kind of bluesy, right? Here's five. Might as well do a little blues. Where's that two? Okay, could flat two work? Of course. just get really chromatic if you want Ooh. A minor triad with the natural six two four okay you get the idea so fun I mean just endlessly fun that's what I want to do rolls around. I just want to sit sit around and play with this stuff. This little sound. That's that famous intro that Miles Davis did to Autumn Leaves. It's in the key of G. Very famous version of Autumn Leaves that Miles Davis did with Cannonball Adderley. Is just minor six, one flat three, five natural six, five. So, really cool to know these sounds. That's it for minor six chord, and we're gonna we're gonna cover a lot more chords in this series. So, so stay tuned. Um, I hope you enjoy practicing this stuff and just sitting with me, hanging out while we while we go through all the details, these five steps of these five positions of all these chord types. Um, I just love being kind of step by step like this, thorough like this um, having a system being organized um, it's, it's it's just such a pleasure to do that I, I, to practice that way and that's how I want to show you things uh, so I know it's not I don't know it's not as flashy as a lot of YouTube stuff out there but uh, this is just how I experience it personally and how I want to teach it so uh, we're gonna keep going with more chord types and I'm looking forward to more if you want that free resource, that free download of my chord tone vocabulary pack that has all the arpeggio guitar shapes of 12 different chord types, including, of course, the minor six chord from this lesson, just use the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com 
chord tones. Hit that like button if you liked this lesson and I post a new lesson every week. So next week we're coming back with more from this series, making our way through this, getting to some of the more challenging and interesting chords. We're doing diminished seven next week. It sounds so cool. It's such an interesting sound, an interesting chord, and super fun to be able to use in our improvising and our playing. So I'm looking forward to working on that diminished seven chord with you next week. See you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.